January 20th marked the start of a new era in Washington, to say the least. It's now exactly 50 days since President Trump took his oath of office, and he's well on his way to making America great again. Now let's take a quick look back at some of the most substantial moments from the last 50 days. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Now arrives the hour of action. First one is withdrawal of the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We've been talking about this for a long time. Thank you. Keystone Pipeline. Beginning today, the United States of America gets back control of its borders. And this is the protection of the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States. Today, I am keeping another promise to the American people by nominating Judge Neil Gorsuch of the United States Supreme Court. Mike Flynn is a fine person, and I asked for his resignation. There was a certain amount of information given to Vice President Pence, and I was not happy with the way that information was given. The President of the United States. So I am calling on all Democrats and Republicans in Congress to work with us to save Americans from this imploding Obamacare disaster. Mr. President, do you still have confidence yes, in the Thank Attorney General, general sir? Total. When were you aware that he spoke to the Russian ambassador? I wasn't aware at all. I'm proud to support the replacement plan released by the House of Representatives that will lower costs, expand choices, increase competition, and ensure health care access for all Americans. This is the time we're going to get it done. All right, Juan, it's halftime, 50 days out of the first 100. Executive orders on immigration, re rolling back regulations, Supreme Court, TPP pullout, tackling Obamacare, tax reform. We're only 50 days in. Yeah, and you forgot. I mean, you could also talk about things like he's TPP, I liked a lot. Dakota Pipeline, right? Keystone Pipeline, those were good things, mm -hmm. right? I think he's also. I mean, I know not everybody is crazy about her, but Betsy DeVos at education, I'm crazy about someone who's a school choice proponent. Those are good things. So, I mean, I think there's some good, but I mean, if you asked me overall, what I remember... Can someone get the Juan Williams out of the, the real Juan Williams? <laughs> yeah, out of the green room? <laughs> where, where is he? He's in a closet right. square. Right, who's holding Juan Williams know. hostage yeah, in the back yeah, room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm, if you're <laughs> asking your what I, I want to be... You know what? He's my president, too. There you know. go. I wanna, there so you I want to be go. fair, but I will say what I remember, if you ask me what I remember is... The wiretap stuff, President Obama wiretapped him with no evidence. Here we go. Oh, there we found him. tax reform? <laughs> Where's tax reform? I'm for that. Oh, okay. What about something like uh, the wall? I, I don't see it. I don't see it. What about Mike Flynn? I think we dealt with that in the montage. What about the plan to get rid of ISIS? Right. What about a billionaire cabinet? A what about populist? Get, what about I get Greg in here and let's talk about <laughs> some of the. I mean, he bit off a lot of pieces of the pie. He's the, uh, he's the Federal Express of presidents because he, he it was, this is probably the fastest delivery on promises. Whether you like the promises or not, the fact that they happened quickly, he made President Obama look like snail mail at this pace. And I always go back to the fact that I think he, he treats this like a job. So there is no, he gets up in the morning, he puts on his uniform, and he goes and he does this stuff. And I don't think he thinks like a politician where, hey, I do one thing every three days, and then that's enough. And then you look at what, he, what happened with the jobs numbers, which are pretty big. You got 95,000 new jobs in manufacturing, 58,000 in construction. So he's not making America great again. He's making America make America great again because they are actually making things, which is one of his campaign promises. Kennedy, uh, Greg points out some of the jobs. By the way, 152,528,000 people, Americans working right now. Guess what that is? Uh, that's the labor force participation rate improving. And, and you know what else that is? That's a record. Uh, that, an all-time record. And, and I think as long as the economy continues to improve and he's got these good jobs numbers and, you know, other economic indicators, that's going to be a net positive for him. And it's interesting because although Juan points out some of the scandals, whether it's, you know, wiretapping, Mike Flynn, those things tend to go away because people have a shorter attention span for those. But for things that really matter, and that is the bottom line, as long as that continues to improve, people will see this presidency positively. And if he can take that into 2018 and pass a new health care bill and tax reform, Holy moly, Eric Bowling, you might be talking about a successful presidency. Is, is he doing anything wrong? <laughs> well, look, I, I think what's important 
So there has been these accusations that he's not doing enough, that not enough is getting done. So I think it's smart from his team, and I think it also shows the impact of bringing on a new communications director, even branding this as the first 50 days of action and pushing out this information, combating the narrative that there's not been enough done. But look, I think there's been, you know, confidence matters. And we've seen a lot of confidence in terms of the economy. And the economy is what is going to inoculate President Trump from criticisms. That's what's going to get him reelected if he can boost the economy. And what have we seen? We've seen a 15-year high in uh, consumer confidence. Uh, we've seen a great jobs numbers, uh, I think a, a, a decade high in construction jobs added as well. We've seen these business roundtables that he's, he's held uh, with these uh, leaders, with these business leaders, which also helps with confidence because he's meeting with them. He's talking about rolling back regulation. He's talking about these things that are going to help boost the economy. So and we've seen the Dow hit record high as well. And so, you know, there, we're, we're seeing a lot of signs of confidence on what the Trump administration is going to bring. Let me bring it to Juan. Though. Why is the media, the media just relentlessly trashing the guy when some, we're talking about some of the most important things in, in, in the to the people, to the voters, our jobs, the economy, making life better for themselves and their families. Well, and I it's think, working. Well, I don't know that it's working. I mean, I, I would say on jobs, and I would just point this out to everybody at the table, you look at the record of accomplishment and you say, oh, my gosh, 4.7% unemployment. I think that's what Obama took it to at one point was 4.7%. And it's just one-tenth of a percentage point down from what Obama had at, uh, last month, right? So, I mean, okay. okay but here's, here's the yeah. difference. If I could yeah. just point this out very quickly yeah. and clarify that, because this is really important. Mm -hmm. Wages are actually going up. And, and, and they were going up at the end of Obama. Yeah, but you know what? This, this president is going to get credit for that and also the labor force participation rate. That mm -hmm. is a, a more essential and truthful barometer than the unemployment number I itself. just know unemployment's been around since my whole life, right? And but I, it's I, that's what. But I will also ask this of you, Gregory. Yes. You were saying uh, compared to Obama, and I think, wait a minute, let's go back to oh, 2009. Obama, by this point, had an $800 billion stimulus plan to get us out of recession, mm -hmm. plus he had passed the Women's Pay that. Equity. I, know, oh, I was against that, too, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> And well, get clean water. And yeah, I, yeah. Give up. I, give I hate up. everything good. But I mean, compared <laughs> I to Obama. poison the water and Flint. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's... You know, oh, you like that. You no, like but that. Juan, there is a downside to this, uh, this increase in, in, in labor participation. There are fewer people who are going to protest because they'll be working and you're going to have to start creating more days like, you know, women's uh, a day without women so that they can take time off to protest because now they have jobs. That's how you really make the unemployment number go down. You count the protesters as employees. <laughs> uh, this truck, this and they do, get, some of them do get talk paid. To the, talk to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and say, you know, these protesters <laughs> Soros should pay should be counted. But to, but to Juan's point, confidence really does matter because if businesses feel that the economic climate is going to get better, that we're going to see this decrease in regulations uh, that have been keeping them down, that have been preventing them from wanting to grow and expand, that matters. And we're seeing signs of confidence throughout the market, as I mentioned earlier, whether it's consumer confidence, whether it's businesses announcing the fact that they're going to stay in America, that they're going to keep jobs in America. All this stuff but matters it, it, because it, it, it adds up and we win at the end. And it, at some point, though, it's going to have to be more than sure. theoretical optimism. Agreed. It's going to have to be more than promises. You're going to have to have tax reform, and they're going to have to chip away at financial regulations, uh, you know, dismantling parts of Dodd-Frank. Sorry, Juan. I, you know, I agree with you 100 percent that, that a lot of these numbers, the, the jobs numbers, the employers putting on more employment, people spending, all these things are based on that tax reform. And... It, it, they're going to have a bit of a, a dance here, the, the Trump administration, because you want to make sure Obamacare gets fixed, not only re, uh, repealed but replaced, but you also want to have time for that tax reform. And for some stupid reason, Congress can't figure out how to do both at the same time. Procedurally, they can't do it. Now, Juan, you're, you spend a lot of time in D.C. Why can't they do two things at once? Wait a second. I'm so curious. So you're, you're attacking Republican leadership in Congress? I thought the people in the Freedom Caucus were your pals. The Freedom Caucus are my pals, and I think they're right well, on. They're, they're spot on. Right. Well, they're opposed. Well, they're opposed. Not let the GOP, I, what do you call it, Rhino Care bill, pass through wow, wow, just wow. to get it through so you can Why, get to the next step. I tell you what, talk to Greg and talk to Lisa, talk to Kennedy, because I don't want to get in the middle of a family okay. feud. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. I don't think so it's stopped why, you before the fight. Yeah, I'm all for fixing well, the real I'm answer. The real answer honest. is there's no answer. Why, why can't Congress do two things at once? I, I think they actually are. There are some procedures. that they're, That's why they're breaking it down. And I don't think they're lying to anybody about it. They're telling, you, they're telling people this is how it's going to be done. And remember, I mean, you call it rhino care, but 
President Trump wasn't the most conservative candidate up there. That was Ted Cruz. Um, I, I think the big news to come from these numbers, okay, they're not blowing everybody's mind. It just shows that the country is resilient, that the media can create a, histor a hysterical narrative about President Trump, that the world's going to hell, or get, everything's the apocalypse, but the country keeps going. The jobs are, jobs are growing, unemployment's coming down. America keeps going, even though the media says it's disastrous. So I think that it's a, it's a story about a, about a country, not just about a politician. Very and it's interesting, sense? How, how, how is Nancy Pelosi going to spin positive jobs numbers without looking like she's against American yeah. workers, which is the biggest problem she'll, the Democrats have right now? She'll find a way. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that what never, they did to Obama? Isn't that what they did to Obama? And she'll do it with a straight face. Oh, my Ooh. God. <laughs>